New York's 42nd Street Theater, the curtain is soon to go up on the final performance of the season's most successful musical comedy. There's nothing at all unusual about this performance, except one thing. Dan Christie, the leading man, is mysteriously absent. I've just been through the whole building, Miss Lane, from the boiler room to the top of the flagpole. He just ain't here. Well, keep on looking, Joe, please. Oh, Mac. I phoned the ass to bar, the Waldorf Grill, the Traveler's Aid, and Kresselmeyer's Fish Grotto. No, Danny boy. Did you look in the... Yeah, there, too, in all the dressing rooms, Vicky. Oh, Max, what'll we do? There's still ten minutes before you and he appear. What if he got run over? He may be in a hospital unconscious. Well, that Danny don't need a hospital. I wonder, did he think we closed last night? Oh, we've got to find him, Max. We've just got to. <laughs> Yes, they're searching everywhere for Dan Christie. Everywhere except right in front of the theater, where Dan's having rather a difficult time saying goodnight to a most engaging young lady. Well, thanks a lot for dropping me by, Marilyn. You've got lots of time yet, Danny. You said you didn't have to change. Uh, well, I, I've got to make up. I know. I'll come in and watch you. Oh, uh, some other time, honey. I... Oh, well, wait a minute. Your chin lipstick, darling. Oh, oh, that's fine. Yeah. Here, my handkerchief. Thanks. Well, yeah. Mm. Well, how's that? Perfect. You'll phone me tomorrow? Oh, sure. Good night, Danny. Good night. Well, Phoebe, any luck? I'm only your agent, honey, not his. No, no luck. Phil, you said something about Danny breaking a dinner date tonight. Oh, well, that's right. He, he said he'd have a surprise for me. Maybe this is the surprise, not showing up. Danny, Danny, is that you? Oh, Danny, where have you... Oh, Victor. Oh, how nice. Vicky. Yes, just as I thought. Time has succeeded in making you only more explicit. Oh, hi. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Phoebe. You haven't changed a bit. Ah, uh, Vicky Lane in person, in the flesh. And a couple of pounds too much of it. That was always one good thing about being your dancing partner, Victor. You were so strenuous, I never got above 110. Thank you, Miss Lane. Be ready for your entrance. Thanks, Joe. I'm sorry, Victor, but I've got a show to do. After the show, maybe? Well, uh, how about intermission time? Come back then, huh? Wonderful. I'll see you then, darling. Goodbye, Phoebe. What a character. Oh, he's all right. Oh, where's Dan? Now don't get yourself upset over nothing. Nothing? Remember Boston? That doesn't count. She chased him. It's always a girl when he's late. I just hated to admit it. Well, of course I'm here. What's everybody so worked up about? Hello, baby. Oh, Danny. See you later, kids. Come on, Max. Let's scram. Huh? Oh, sure. Danny, where were you? Just out shopping for something. And uh, when did you start using perfume? What? Oh. Oh, well, uh, that's some new toilet water I'm trying out. Too strong, baby? No, too expensive. That's called Surrender, Dan. $32 an ounce. And the only girl I know who can afford to smell at $32 an ounce is that Park Avenue Deb from the neck up, Marilyn Irwin. Well, now you're just getting feminine. Hey, you two on stage. Your number is next. We're coming. Surrender. Hmm. Did you? Ouch! Watch where you're going. You were born suspicious. Come on, my public is calling it. Your public. Your public? Well, of all the conceited, of all the... So it's our public. Well, smile, will you? Mm, is that better, Mr. Christie? That's just wonderful. Just wait till we're through with this number. Just wait. Oh, listen, a dame like you ought to be here. Oh, pipe down. We're on. Don't let the thunder scare you. Don't let it wear you down. You may get wet, but you never can drown in the rain. Don't be afraid of showers. Feel like the flowers do. Cares will be nil if you will trill a silly refrain. Start singing. Run, little raindrop, run. Get along, little cloud, get along. I've got a date with a place in the sun, so run, little raindrop, run. Sing, little bluebird, sing. Mr. Gloom is afraid of a song. Go away, little blackbird. Stay, little bluebird. Run, run little, little raindrop, run. You'd better go, or as sure as I live, you're gonna wind up deep, deep down in the dreary river. Run, little raindrop, run. Get along, little cloud, get along. I got a date with a place in the sun, so run. Little raindrop, run. All right, Mickey, better get into your other class.
Captain. Well, now, if you must know why I was late, I was out looking at engagement rings. May I see it, Danny? The ring? Well, it's still at the jewelers, but... Oh, the... why? Well, uh, because I'm having an inscription put on the inside. Oh, I guess you've got to know everything, huh? Okay. The inscription says, To Vicky with love, together till the final curtain. Oh, Danny. It costs $2 a word and won't be ready till Wednesday. Together to the final curtain. Don't you like it? The most beautiful words I ever heard. Oh, darling. Well, now it's a little better. Forgive me, Danny. Sure, sure, but you shouldn't act up like that, honey. Hey, now, no tears, Vicky, please. I just can't help it, Dan. Tears and mascara don't mix. I like your eyes plain. I'll just borrow that handkerchief. Here you are, honey. Oh, no, no, not that one. I... Were you going to say something, Danny? Uh-uh, no. Awfully tiny handkerchief, Danny. Are these your initial initials? Yeah. No, no, no. I just borrowed it from one of the stagehands. I had something in my eye. Like uh, lipstick? Could be paint. Could be, Dan. And those initials could stand for Murder Incorporated. But they don't. They stand for Marilyn Irwin. You were out with her, weren't you? After promising me I was me not that you... out with her. I just bumped into her. Hmm, from the looks of the lipstick, it must have been quite a collision. Oh, why am I trying to kid myself? Look, Vicky, Vicky, you can't convict a guy on circumstantial evidence. I've told you the truth. And I've had all I'm going to take. That's the truth, too. But won't you even let me... Hurry up and change, Mr. Christie. He'll never change. Hey, Vicky, you have to. You've got that other number with Dan in two minutes. Not in two minutes or two centuries. Do you hear, everybody? I'm walking out. I'm through. Bartender. Here you are, sir. Twenty minutes ago, I asked for that bourbon soda. Where'd you get it from, Kentucky? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> However, I have been to Kentucky. A state sometimes referred to as the cradle of the West. Hmm, where are all the customers? Well, it's quite late, sir. I venture they've all gone home. Now, if you'd just go home, everything would be perfect. Danny, boy, Danny. Oh, go away from me. I've been looking for you all night. Bartender, will you throw this bum out? Such an attitude, and me your agent. And what an agent. The show closed over a month ago, and still no backers for a new one. I repeat, Commissioner, beat it. Scram. But I have got the backers. I don't believe you. Pickle and Brown, they'll put up a hundred grand. But there's just one little thing. Like, for instance? Well, Bickle and Brown want Vicky in the show, too. Oh, no, no, never. Not after what she did to me. Walked out on me, left me flat. Listen, Danny, you're too big a man to hold a grudge. Look at how ridiculous it strikes me. Ha, 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 ha. Look, fat boy. Even if I were willing to forgive Miss Lane, which I'm not, she is not available. Miss Lane is 2,000 miles away at a place called Lake Louise in the Canadian Rockies. They have wolves in the Canadian Rockies, and one of them is their dancing partner, Mr. Victor Prince. Yeah, I know all about that. That's why I brought you these tickets. Tickets? Yeah, you fly there tomorrow. What makes you think she'd leave Victor Prince for Bickle and Brown? She's not to know anything about them. You've got to break her come back to New York just for you, and in ten days. Oh, but Vicky hates me. Oh, look, just turn on the old charm. Make her see what a romantical guy she walked out on. And don't mention B&B &B at all. And why should I go to all that trouble? You really want to know why? Because Bickle and Brown have a funny feeling that without Vicky, you're all washed up. They said it to me, and I say it to you. Now, what do you say? Blow. Okay, I'll blow. But there are your tickets. You know, they say that Lake Louise is remarkably scenic, sir. It's referred to constantly as, <laughs> and I quote, the jewel of the Canadian Rockies. Get me another drink. I can still hear you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on, Vicky. we've danced enough. Always leave them wanting more. Good, I'm tired. I've arranged for a table, just you and I. Mm, perfect. You're wonderful, Victor. Simply wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. Come on, Vicky. come on over. Oh, thank you. You're all very sweet, gentlemen, but I was about to sit down with Mr. Prince. Well, maybe he won't mind if I... Vicky, our table's over there, darling. Well, then again, maybe he will mind. Thanks anyway, gentlemen. Yes, we are most flattered, most flattered. Well, Vicky, on an occasion like this, our triumph at Lake Louise, it calls for something very special. I make you a brandy o victor. Now, let me see. Captain, uh, you bring nutmeg up first. <laughs> How clumsy of me. A knife on the floor, Victor. That always used to mean a strange man would arrive. Remember? Yeah, we were so silly, darling. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Nutmeg, Captain, up first. Bit of lemon peel. Castilian, of course. <laughs> head. Oh. What's the matter? Who are you? 
McTavish is the name, sir. Your valet. Oh, my valet. My valet? Your valet, sir. You hired me yesterday afternoon, sir, in New York. I always thought a fellow saw pink elephants. So now it's valets, huh? Why don't you remember, sir? The cocktail bar? Oh, uh, I'm beginning to. You insisted I give up everything and come with you. <laughs> so we took the plane. What plane? Where am I? The Chateau Lake Louise. Heart of the Canadian Rockies. <laughs> You've just been napping. You wouldn't happen to know what I'm doing here besides napping. Well, I believe the nature of your mission has to do with a young lady, sir. Vicky? Excellent, sir. Oh, yeah. It all comes back. Bickle and Brown. Back in ten days with Vicky Lane. Back in ten days with Vicky Lane. <laughs> hey, pardon the levity, sir, but it sounds like a slogan. Now, how long have you been talking like information, please? Well, it all started, sir, when my Aunt Stephanie died. It was in her will. Oh, left you a lot of big words, huh? Her will stipulated that as long as I went to college, I would receive $10,000 a year. I've been going to school now for 20 years, sir. I, uh... I graduated last month. Twenty years in one school? I have diplomas from five, sir. Any from bartender's college? Well, I became a bartender last week, sir. After 20 years of school books, I was determined to learn about life. Tell me, what's the melting point of magnesium quick? Uh, 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, sir. Mm-hmm. Besides the Turkish alphabet. Is that correct, sir? How do I know? It sounds correct. It sounds impossible. All right, Mac, hang around. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, no, for a minute, I thought I was hearing music. But you are, sir. Your secretary and her brother. My what? Why not go inside and renew acquaintance, sir? She's the most interesting creature. Well, just try and keep me out of there. Vou explicar que é o chatelo cachucho. Chucho é um trem que vai, que vai me levar perto de alguém. Pois numa estação que passa o chatelo cachucho. Eu vou soltar se vou, se vou, mesmo se o trem não parar. E você pega o trem na pista, o Vani Station, às três horas de tarde. Pouco a pouco vai saindo da capital. Toma um cafezinho e tira uma pestana. E come uns remenegues lá em Carolana. Pro americano, tem barreto de bar. Oh, Mas para o brasileiro, está querendo zambar. Vão, se que vão, vai, vai, vão, vão, vão. Se que vão, vão, se que vão. Pois o maquinista pode ser tambista. Oh, oh, chata no cadério. Vá, 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 vou encontrar. Vou certo alguém que não me espera na estação. Um certo alguém. Aí o tupão foi nem feio, pois tem cara de Spencer 3. Quero chegar, pois sei que lá vai ser pra lá de bom. Sou o Tchata Nuka Chuchu, Anto Chuchu, Anto Chuchu, me ramo. Tchata Nuka Tchata Nuka Tchata Nuka Tchata, o Tchata Nuka Tchata Nuka Tchata Nuka Tchata, o Tchata Nuka Tchata, o Tchata Nuka Tchata, a tchá, a tchá, a Chuchu. Well, well, hello. Please do not bargain while I'm sing, will you, please? Oi, too, Mr. Christie, always. Well, don't bet it is on it. Do you know who you are? My name is Rosita, Rosita Murphy. Murphy? <laughs> Sure, your new secretary. Oh, no. Yes, yes, that's quite right, sir. You hired her when we stopped in Detroit. She was at the souvenir counter at the airport. Well, you were having some little troubles, and I fixed for you. Little troubles? Uh huh. You want to send your photograph to little girls, but you did it often not want to have to know what it was from, mm. and I think. Oh, thanks. I sent her one of me. Then you say I got a new job working for you, and I like it very much. Uh, tell me, Snow White, who are the seven dwarfs? My brothers. They play nice music, you know. Hmm. Of course, I hired them, too. <laughs> you insist. They love me so much, and you say, whole bunch come alone, too. Well, now that clears everything. Yes, and rather a happy little establishment it is, sir. Look, do me one favor. You are the boss, you wish slaves. Then just stay here till I come back, all of you. Sure, we have to practice the music anyway. Goodbye. Uh, I'm going to go downstairs. I want to find Vicky Lane. Excellent, sir. Vinny, Vidi, uh, Vicky. Hmm? I came, I saw, I conquered. Oh, yeah? I came, I saw, I went on the wagon. I'll be back a little while, Mac Tavis. Almost finished. Brandy O Victor. You know, I got the recipe straight from the Sultan of Indore, the richest man in the world. One taste, Vicky, you feel the same way. I still think I should have ordered a sandwich. Why don't you let me get it for you? Dan, what in the world are you... I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no. Oh, excuse me, Victor. This is Mr. Christie, Mr. Prince. Oh, oh yes. Vicky's dancing partner, huh? That's one way of expressing it, yes. You mean there's another way? Look, Dan, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, oh a ring, yeah, I see. An engagement ring, Dan. Isn't it exciting? Yes, it's very exciting. Well, I, I guess I'll be running along. Oh, no, sit down, please. It'll be ready in just a second now. Another of my specialties. Brandy or Victor. Now the point throw. Just ten more drops. <laughs> Did you say brandy or blockbuster, old Victor? 
I can't understand it. It's not supposed to do that. Well, Vicky, I... I hope your married life won't be quite so explosive. Well, thank you, Dan, but I'm really very happy. Well, that's great. That's fine. Well, I think I'll go upstairs now. It's not as noisy. There's only a Chattanooga, Chattanooga, choo-choo-choo, a Chattanooga, Chattanooga, choo choo Dan, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing at all, nothing at all. That was, wasn't the brandy that exploded, Vicky. Only my heart. Good night. Good night, Dan. Hmm. Peculiar fellow. Very. He's turning around. He's looking at us. Oh, quick, kiss me. Darling. Uh, how was that? Exactly right. He's gone now. And I don't think Mr. Christie will trouble us again. <laughs> Dan Christie came to Lake Louise to bring Vicki Lane back to New York. But his eyes have just seen what his head had never thought of. Vicki Lane in Victor Prince's arms. And on her third finger, left hand, a very impressive engagement ring. Returning to his rooms, Dan calls for his scholarly valet, McTavish. Pack the bags, McTavish. We're leaving. You know, it's remarkable, Mr. Christie, convincing Miss Lane like that. Yeah, but I flopped. She's in love, McTavish. I guess that lets me out in all directions. I've lost my girl, and I've lost my next show. Come on, take a wire for me to the commissioner. You remember my agent? Indeed, sir, but I believe wire-taking is more within the realm of your secretary. Yeah? Miss Murphy. Oh, Miss Murphy? Hey, Murph! You call, boss? I called you. Good, we come. Okay, boys, in the tools. Jean Vest, Francis Manuel, Gustavo, Gustavo, and Patrick Murphy, Jr. All present, boys. Look, uh, Murph. Yes? I don't need them. I just want to talk to you. Oh, why don't you say so? Okay, boys, scram. Boom, boom. Oh, I want you to send a wire for me, Mark. We're leaving. We're going home. You go home, mate, but I stay. Right, Max? Uh, yes, we had toyed with a thought, uh, Miss Murphy and I, of staying here for quite a while, sir, uh, to study glaciers. Well, I can get a job from the hotel. They hear my drugs and me practice, and boom, they right away they say we work for them. All right, Murphy, you can stay if you want to. Oh, Murphy, 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 if I hear some more, I scream it. Well, that's your name, isn't it? Yes, it's my name. My father is Murph and my mother Brazilian. Ten years ago, Papa ran away from my mama. Two years ago, brother and I come up to not to look for my papa. But this U.S.A. ship full of a Patrick Murph. Hey, what do you look at me as that? You're pretty cute. You say that too, my father. Oh, oh, well, that's purely an academic observation. Look, you know, I got a great idea. Get into your room, Rosita, and into your best dress. Understand? Oh, you got dates, maybe, huh? Yeah, mm. yeah, right away, mm. right away. Mm. <laughs> Tell you what we'll do. What we'll do, we'll go downstairs to the supper club. I, I, I want to make an impression. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, kind of make someone jealous, maybe? Oh, I see. I'm the bite and she's the big fish, huh? Mm, yeah. <laughs> now, don't mind if I take a few innocent liberties. Why not? This is the land of liberties, yes. Yeah? Well, Murph, enjoying yourself? Oh, I love it. Well... I like very much, but when will you get to work? Well, that's their table over there. I, um, uh, I hope you don't mind dancing so close. I think it's so much cozier. But when you dance at Roomba, she's not supposed to be so cozy. But it's okay by me, big boy. <laughs> Shh. There they are. Well, here we are again. Oh, hello, old man. And Phoebe. Well, don't look so surprised, Phoebe. It's my natural expression. Naturally, yes. Oh, excuse me. Uh, this is my secretary, Miss Murphy. Miss Vicky Lane, Miss Phoebe Gray, and Mr. Victor Prince. How do you do? I'm sure I'm fine, thanks. How do you do? How do you do? Well, Vicky, didn't you get that sandwich yet? A long ago, but won't you join us? You and your secretary? Well, we were going to sit on the table. Oh, please, I insist. Okay, Rosita? Thanks so much. Perfectly stunning gown you're wearing, Miss Murphy. Patty Carnegie? I should say not. Chris bought it for me, yes, Christy? Well, you see, Miss Murphy has a sense of humor. She's the cinch for my next show. Oh, I'll bet she's a barrel of laughs. Oh, I'm awfully glad you think so, Vicky. You see, girls who are just beautiful are a dime a dozen. But when you find one with a sense of humor, ah, then you really got something. If you'll excuse me, Victor, I'd like to go to the powder room. Well, hurry back, darling. Oh, would you, Miss Lange? My face is a mess, too. Phoebe. Huh? What's cooking? I don't know what's cooking, but I know someone's stewing. Good. Well, I don't know, Miss Lane, but I think I'm going to like your people. You are being so nice to me. It's strictly unintentional, I assure you. Well, thank you. 
Mm, I wish I was a blonde like you. Maybe I bleach my hair, too. Oh, you're terribly witty, Miss Murphy, but my hair is naturally blonde. Well, shut my mouth. Don't breeze it to a stool and nobody will know the difference. Look, I don't know what you're after, but you don't stand a chance with Dan Christie. Huh? I think you know what I mean. Maybe I do, do you? You bet I do. What's the trouble, Miss Lane? You got hard time in finding boyfriends? Of course not, and don't change the subject. I don't know what your relations are with Dan, but I know that you're not... We are no relations. He's just my boss. Oh, then it's only natural you're head over heels in love with him, huh? The love? <laughs> don't make me laugh. Not in the head and not in the heels. Nowhere. You're sure? You're quite sure? Who's it totally? I know him since yesterday. He's what you call just a push-up. Oh, oh you mean a, a pick-up? That's it. He picked me up in Detroit and sit me down here. Just between me and you, Miss Lent, I think he has something up his sleeve. Oh? He say I go play with him and I give him, I give him a big fever. Fever? Mm -hmm, that's what I say. Oh, you mean favor. That's what I say, fever, yes. Oh. Well, tell me more, Rosita. Tell me everything. You know, you're beginning to grow on me. Well, a little while ago, Chris said he got a big idea and he said he's my best. Well, I wonder what's keeping Vicky and your charming secretary. I hope they hit it off all right. What worries me is who hit first. Phoebe, go to the powder room. If they're still alive, bring them back, will you? Even if they're mangled beyond... Well, get a load of that. What? Here they come, giggling like a couple of schoolgirls. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting oh. terribly stuffy in here. Should we get some air, Vicky? I like it here, Victor. I want you, Mr. Prince, if it's okay with my boss. Oh, but I didn't mean that... <laughs> Can I get the air, Christy? You're off duty, Murph. Come on, mister. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, Victor. Yeah, I'll be right back, darling. Well, it's a shame to let this nice lake air go to waste, Vicky. Don't be silly. You're not afraid to take a little walk with me, are you? That's ridiculous. Come on, we'll catch up with them. Oh, we'll go the other way. Unless you don't think you can trust yourself. Well, of all the... Come on, let's go. Oh, my. What a night. Would you look at that moon? Too bad your secretary's with Victor. There are some lovely places around here at the lake where you could dictate. I, uh, I take it you don't approve of Miss Murphy. Oh, but I do. I find her frankness most refreshing. Say, what is this sudden friendship between you two? Oh, we just had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk in the powder room. You know, as girls will. Yeah. Listen, Vicky. remember that song? I ought to. We sang it every night for almost a year. I bet you've forgotten the words already. Mm, I wish I could. I've got a memory like Dumbo. Yeah? Is that bad? Mm, it's awful. I remember every note and every word. In a dream, the strangest and the oddest things appear. And what insane and silly things we do. Here is one I see before me vividly and clear. As I recall it, you were in it too. I had the craziest dream last night. Yes, I did. I never dreamed it could be. Yet there you were in love with me. I found your lips close to mine, so I kissed you. You didn't mind it at all. When I'm awake, such a break never happens. How long can a guy go on dreaming? If there's a chance that you care then please say you do baby say it and make my craziest dream come true oh brother what a ham hmm? well now what did I do you probably fixed the whole thing with the orchestra leader our old love song. Thought it'd do the trick, did you, Danny? How can you say things like that? Oh, Dan, you're still the biggest phony that ever drew a breath. You figured that all you needed was a romantic backdrop and some sentimental music, and I'd hop right back into your lap again. All right. 
Maybe that was the general idea. There must be a good reason why I'd go to all this trouble. Do you ever think of that? Mm, I'll say there's a good reason. Like all selfish, dishonest people, you need someone to take advantage of. Well, you can get yourself a new rag doll. Even if I weren't in love with Victor, do you think I'd get back on that little merry-go-round of yours? Okay, sister. You win. I'll leave. Good. When? As soon as you relax and listen to me. I'm relaxed. Go ahead. Okay. There. Oh, Dan. Now, will you listen to me? All night long, darling. Go ahead. Oh. There. Danny is sincerely in love with Vicky, but his carefully timed technique to win her back has earned him only a well-aimed, though feminine, right uppercut. But he's strangely elated as he reports his evening's progress to McTavish. Well, everything's fine, McTavish. She wants me to go away and never to see her again. Oh, how nice. Oh, oh what am I saying? McTavish, any time a woman never wants to see you again, that means she can't exist without you. Really, sir? Uh, your scientific approach to a woman's heart is amazing. Thank you, McTavish. And the next step is what, sir? The tenderness routine. Remind me in the morning to get some long-stemmed roses. Now it is morning. Much too early for Danny or Vicky to be up, but well into the day, as far as McTavish and Rosita are concerned. Say, McTavish, what did you think of the crazy boys we have, Christy? Oh, Christy, he's an extraordinary gentleman. Just like you, huh? Oh, now you know nothing about me. You're just a little girl. Uh, a little girl. I, on the other hand, when my whole life was abruptly changed by the inheritance of a goodly sum of toothpaste stock. What did you do to space, smart boy? I am learning life. Good, I help you. Well, I want to find out just what makes people tick. Look. Why don't you tell me before you are a millionaire? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm worth only in the neighborhood of, say, $600,000. That's the kind of neighborhood I like it. <laughs> you want to know what makes people go tick, huh? You should listen to me because I'm ticking all the time. Are you really? Mm-hmm. Yes, listen. I'm listening. Good. Hey, boys, come in. Oh, oh my goodness. <clears throat> Just my brothers. Let's go. We serenade McTavish. You like McTavish? Ah, uh, tick me again, Miss Murphy. <laughs> roses doing out in the hall? I threw them there, of course. Why? He sent them. Oh, how I hate that man. Victor? No, Dan Christie. Somebody call me? Oh, hello, girl. What is this? My, Phoebe, aren't you the little flower girl, though? You know, I think you might find some customers in the lobby for those roses. I get it. I'm a quick study. Thanks for leaving your door open. Good luck, you stinker. If you don't leave this room at once, I'll call Victor. I'd like to call him something myself. Oh, you wait. You just wait. 
Hello? Mr. Victor Prince, please. Hello, Victor? Darling, how about coming over to see me, hmm? Oh, wonderful. Right away, thank you. Goodbye. Now do you believe me? Now do you believe me? <laughs> you see, the telephone always works better if you plug it in. See? Like this. Now there, would you like to try it again? Mr. Victor Prince, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Victor Prince, please. Hello, darling? This is Vicky, and I'm terribly lonesome. Of course I do, sweet. Terribly, terribly. You will? Oh, and hurry, please, darling. I'm all alone. Gee, thanks. In one minute? Well, I don't know if I can wait that long, but I'll try. Goodbye. Well, I've got to give you credit. I, I, I didn't think you'd do it. Well, I did, so please get out. Uh-uh. Danny. No, I'll just hide. I want to listen. Oh, please go, Danny. <laughs> Danny's room is only two doors away, and if he sees you, he'll... Uh-oh. Oh, the window, Dan. Go out the window and down the fire escape. But I may break my neck. Well, then do it quietly. Vicky, I'm here. I'm coming, darling. Ah, uh, don't move, darling. Look at you. A Picasso. Huh? A painting. Oh. Oh, if only a painter could capture those eyes and lips, it would be a masterpiece. And it would hang on my heart. Oh, sit down, Victor. You know, dear, your loneliness has made me so happy. Frankly, Vicky, up to this minute, I've been a little worried about the fellow named Christy. Oh, silly. But when you just phoned me, I knew somehow that he was gone. Lost far, far away in your past. He is gone, isn't he? Well, of course, darling. And now, now you're completely mine. Uh, Victor, uh, why don't you try that chair? It's much more comfortable than my lap. Mm. Darling, you're not avoiding me again. I couldn't stand that. I know. Let's order dinner. No, food doesn't interest me in the least right now. Well, well, how about a nice long walk? Well, Vicky, what on earth's the matter with you? Oh, I know. You just want to tease me, but I'm not going to let you. Oh, no, 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 stop. Actually, I simply don't understand you. You want me here because you're lonesome. Right away, you want to get rid of me. All right, I'll go. Oh, no. Well, if you could just stay here and, and maybe play huh? gin rummy. I love gin rummy. I wish you could say you loved me with as much feeling. Well, I do love you, Victor. More than you loved him? I detest, despise, and loathe the worm. It baffles me what I ever saw in him. Yes, whatever possessed you, sweetness, that puffed-up third-rate baritone. Yes. Third-rate baritone? Well, you half-baked second lieutenant. If I couldn't do better than that... Where did you come from? <laughs> Vicky, what is this man doing here? Why, well, I, I haven't the slightest idea. Now I understand. Now I know why you wanted to eat, to go walking, to play gin rummy. Now, Victor, don't be ridiculous. Now, how can I be any more ridiculous than you've already made me? Sticking that man on the balcony while I try to make love to you. Of all the insincere, dishonest females. Victoria, I will thank you to give me back my ring. Here. Hmm, little scratched, I see. So will you be if you don't move fast. Don't worry, I'm going. Of course, you know this means Victor must find a new partner. I hope she has spikes on her dancing slippers. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I, I, I was marooned. There isn't any fire escape. Well, a gentleman would have jumped. You know, a... Your finger's going to feel awful funny without a ring on it, sweetheart. Please take this one, Vicky. The diamond may not be as big, but I don't think people will notice. Give it to me. There. Out the window? You threw it out the window. And I hope you'll follow it, Danny, right now. Achoo! Achoo! Who's, Who's that? that? Oh, looking for the ring, too? I am not. I've just been taking a walk. At four o'clock in the morning? I couldn't sleep. Me either. Sit down, Vicky. Cigarette? Well, I'll sit down for a minute. Swell. Danny, I told a lie just now. I was looking for the ring. I hope you find it. I did, just as you sneezed. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I'm awfully sorry I got mad tonight, but I just... Oh, that's all right. I, I, I really got off lucky. I thought Victor was a world's champion heel, but, well, meet the new champ. As long as I have to choose between two heels, I may as well pick the one I love, huh? That is, if you still feel the same way, Danny. Do I? Oh, Vicky. And you'll always be honest with me, won't you? Honey, that sound you just heard is Dan Christie turning over a brand new leaf. Oh, let's get away from everybody. Let's go upstairs now and pack and catch the first plane out in the morning. Well... You know, even in the dark, you look terrific. You kind of glow somehow. Oh, Vicky, it's too good to be true. Yahoo! Oh, shh. 
You'll wake up everybody. I hope so, Yahoo! Hey, what are you doing awake at this hour, Mike Savage? Good morning, sir. That moron woke you up, too, I see, with his yelling. It's all fixed, McTavish. She said yes. Vicky's going to marry me. Oh, how splendid, sir. Both maritally and commercially. Huh? She's going to do the show, too, isn't she? Oh. Well, she doesn't know about that yet. Oh. Now, stop worrying and start getting us packed. We're leaving right after breakfast. Oh, are we? Where to, sir? I'll take it. Hello? Hello, darling. Oh, hello. I, I sure miss you. Me, too. Danny, I was just wondering... When we leave, where are we going? Where? You know, I was just thinking about the same thing. I got a wonderful idea, darling. How about New York? New York must be a wonderful place for a honeymoon. Oh, let's be old-fashioned and go to Niagara Falls. Oh, it's too corny. Manhattan in the spring. Doesn't it just give you a lump in the throat thinking about it? But you know how much we both like scenery, Danny, and Niagara Falls is... Oh, darling, you're all the scenery I'll ever want. Oh, all right, honey. You're the boss. New York it is. I'll see you in the morning. 8.30? It's a date. Good night, Danny. Night. Good night. Good night. Well, you were up early this morning, Miss Lane. No, no mail. Well, I'll be checking out soon, and I wanted to get my bill, and... Oh, Miss Lane. Murph. Oh, I have so much to tell you. Look, how about having breakfast with me? Sure, I have breakfast, but... Can I come too, Vicky? Commissioner. Just thought I'd pay Danny a visit. Where are you going? Back to the big town, New York. Really? Uh-huh. That's wonderful, Vicky. Great. Believe me, you'll never regret it. It's a terrific show, and what a part you've got. Wait a minute. What show? What part? Like Danny told you. It's all set, huh? Oh, I see. Just another of his cheap tricks. Anything to get me back to Broadway with him. Vicky, what is this? What are you trying to tell me? Well, listen very closely. Vicky Lane is not available. I'm not going to do any show. But I'll give him one performance right now that he'll never forget. Where's that elevator? Please, to me. Please, Bert, please. I'm busy. I've got a plane to catch. You won't catch any airplane. She's so mad. Tell hmm. me later. Tell me later. I tell you now, you stubborn mule. Some man in the lobby, he spoiled the beans. All right, go ahead. What How beans? Do... What man? How do I know? He's fat like a ripe popotamus. Commissioner. What did I tell you? He tells her about the tariff park in the show. Oh. I ran right up to tell you, but if you ask me right after me, he's running Miss Lane to tell you herself and not so sweetly. Oh, Murph, Murph, I'm Blake. She'll never believe me this time. She'll never believe I was more interested in her than I could possibly be in 20 shows. Oh, that honeymoon in New York cooked me good. If I'd only agreed to Niagara Falls. Here, take these. What is this? Oh, our tickets to New York. Get some more on the same plane. Enough for you, Mac, all of us. I want to get out of this place as soon as possible. Dan! Come in, Vicky. Now, please don't start explaining now, anything, Vicky, Dan. Now, Vicki, darling, I... You don't really blame me, do you? I've had about all the lies and alibis I can stand. Aha, uh -huh, love birds, huh? How's the Juni Bride feel? I wouldn't know. Ha <laughs> ha! Downstairs in the lobby, we start to talk, but a fat man pushed me out. Look what I have, see? Tickets. Tickets to Niagara Falls. Chris tell me to get two tickets to Niagara Falls. But I don't... Not New York? Who wants to go to New York? And besides, I got witness. Hey, boys, come in. É ou não é verdade que foi verdade essa coisa que eu tô dizendo pra vocês? É ou não é? You see? You see? Two tickets and seven witness in Portuguese. Oh, Danny. <laughs> Danny. Oh, that's all right, baby. You, you see, I... Well, I just wanted to surprise you. Look, Danny. After Niagara, could we go straight down to New York? Sure. But why? To put on a show. We'll put on our own show. Vicky, but with what, honey? It takes at least $60,000. We'll soon find out with what. Rosita. Yes, ma'am. Get everybody together quickly in my room. Mm -hmm. Phoebe, the commissioner, and everybody. And hurry. Mm -hmm. Come on, commissioner, add it up. What's it come to? How much? Relax. All told, including Rosita's piggy bank, we're still a mere 35000 short. Wait a minute. Toothpaste. Huh? Mark Tavish, what is he? Inside, isn't he, Dan, packing? Yeah, but... Uh, oh, Mark Tavish, toothpaste. He has bottles of toothpaste. In my language, that's plenty beaucoup. $600,000. 600000 dollars oh, All in toothpaste. I better start squeezing. Uh. <laughs> oh, Mark Tavish. <laughs> yes, sir? Mark Tavish, if, if uh, we were to put on a show, you'd be willing to hire us, wouldn't you? Oh, indeed, sir. Every one of us. 
Well, that's why we've just decided to let you help feed the kitty. With creams, McTavish, creams. All we need is $35,000. Uh, oh. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, really, but uh, I'm much too unfamiliar with the world of entertainment. This is where the good neighbor polish gets to work out. Yeah. And to a proposition of unsure returns, I can only answer... Uh, Matavish, come on, sweet, and be with the room. Come with me. Come uh, with you, you, me. You will pardon me. No, no. No, no, no. No. Yahoo! But she... She, she kissed me. <gasps> no. McTavish, I'm very sorry, old boy, but I simply cannot countenance such behavior from any valet of mine. You're fired. Oh, yes, yes, you're quite right, sir, but such behavior from a, a business partner? Oh, perfectly okay. I've got all ready, front and pen and checkbook. Come on, my toots, spoo spacey. <laughs> the plane is now flying over beautiful Moose Jaw. Well, Mr. Christie. Yes, stewardess. The pilot just got a radio confirming all your reservations. You're all set for Niagara Falls. Gosh, thanks. Niagara Falls. <whistles> oh, hello, darling. Hello, darling. I must have been dozing. Yeah? Hey, what are you doing? Just fastening your safety belt. That stewardess is much too pretty. <laughs> What a day, Oh, day. but I'm so happy, Danny. Just think we'll be married, Niagara Falls, then our own show on Broadway. Mm-hmm. There, you see how high up we are? Mm-hmm. I'll never touch ground again, Vicky. It'll always be like this for me, way up in the clouds. Oh, you're wonderful. I just think I'm cute. Where are the others? Rosita, Mac, and Phoebe? Sound asleep long ago. I never want to go to sleep again. No? No. When I shut my eyes, no, Vicky. Mm. You don't know what you're missing. You can't dream unless you sleep. Dream? What, for instance? Well, for instance, if there's a chance that you can. Mm. 